What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. Now let's start off by talking about the S140 model number and where it falls in that 100 series of John Deere lawn tractors. In the 100 series, you're going to have eight models. The first four are going to be the S100, S110, S120, and S130. These are all going to be models with the 42 inch deck. Once we move to the S140, now we've jumped into the 48 inch deck. So the S140, like we have here, the S160 and S170 are all gonna have those 48 inch decks. Then once we move up to the S180, that is gonna be the 54 inch deck model. So since this is the first 48 inch deck model in the lineup, it is going to be the one with the least amount of features. So it is gonna be the most bang for your buck unless you are looking for those additional features. So now let's talk about engine and the service points. Now, first thing I'd like to point out is whenever we're getting in to the hood of this machine, getting under that hood, there are gonna be no clasps that are holding it in, no click locks, no anything like that. It's just gonna be a simple raise and lower. Very, very easy to get to that engine. Now, once we raise this up, first thing that we're gonna see is a 22 horsepower engine. It's gonna be branded John Deere here on top, but this is gonna be a Briggs and Stratton engine. So if you look over here on the right-hand side, you are going to see that Briggs and Stratton sticker just so that you know for sure that this is a Briggs and Stratton engine. Now this is going to be a V-twin engine so you are going to have that two cylinders on this machine. So with that you are going to have two spark plugs one over here at the front of the left and one over here on the front on the right hand side so make sure whenever you are doing that spark plug change that you remember that you do have two that you need to change. Now your next service point is going to be right here on top where that 22 horsepower sticker is. This is going to be our air filter has a couple of little twist nuts here that you can do by hand to get that off, get that open and have your air filter exposed. Now, next is gonna be our oil filter. That's gonna be over here on the left-hand side down at the bottom of the engine right here. And then we're gonna have our fuel filter just right in front of that. Then whenever we move over to the right-hand side, what we're gonna have is our oil fill and dipstick right here. It's gonna have the yellow cap. Very easy to see, pull that off, be able to check that oil level put that back on. And then right below that, we are going to have our no tool oil drain system. So this is going to have an easy turn by hand cap on it where you can turn that loose, open that up and start to drain that engine oil when it's time to do those things. Now also right back here behind the engine, we are going to have easy access to our battery. And then right on front of our engine cowling, just as soon as we open up the hood, here is where we're going to have that maintenance chart to help remind you of when these different maintenance things need to be done on this machine. Aside from the engine maintenance, the only other thing really that you're going to have to pay attention to is the greasing of this machine. But luckily on this machine, we're going to have six grease points. Three of those are going to be here on our front axle, one on each side right there on each wheel spindle, and then one right in the center where that axle is going to have that little bit of pivot. And then we are going to have a grease point on each one of our mower deck spindles that turn the blades. So now let's go ahead and move into the operator station of this machine. Like I said, pretty simple layout here very easy to kind of figure out what you're doing but let's go over every single control so starting over here on the left here is where our height of cut adjustment is going to be this is going to be an easy hand selector here that's going to go from one inches all the way up to four inches in quarter inch increments and this is going to be spring assisted so that way making it very easy to raise and lower that without any problems and having that easy change here you can also change those heights on the go so if we're moving from one part of the yard that we want to mow just a little bit higher to to that other part that we want to mow just a little bit shorter it's as simple as right here to the side moving that up and down now moving up and in front of our height of cut adjuster is going to be our brake pedal right over here on the left so this is going to serve as not only our brake pedal but also how we set our parking brake so right here is going to be our orange handle this is going to be our parking brake set so to set that we're going to push in and pull up on this orange handle and to release that we're going to push in on our brake and then push down on our parking brake release that's going to free up that brake to turn that into an actual brake pedal now moving up here to our throttle you'll notice here that this is a one piece throttle there is not a separate lever for the choke this is going to have the choke position all the way at the top once we push forward now we'll notice that we get here to the top and the throttle kind of stops but then we can push here again feels like we're going against a little bit of spring resistance this is going to be your choke position and once you let off you'll see that spring return that back to the max throttle position then once we get that started we can adjust our throttle right here from slow 
up to high. Now below our throttle is gonna be our RIO button. This is gonna be our rear implement option button. This is going to allow us to mow in reverse without the mower dying. But if we do want to have the, the blades engaged and be able to mow in reverse, we first have to hit this button then hit our reverse pedal, start that reverse descent, and then we can let go of this button to continue to mow in reverse. Now, moving right up front here, right on the front top of the dash, we are gonna have an hour meter. This is gonna display our hours, and also at times it may flash up a service symbol, and that is gonna let you know that you have reached one of the service intervals on this machine, that's when you can go back and reference this chart that is underneath the hood. Then to the right of that, we are gonna have our key switch. This is gonna have the stop position, the lights position, the run position, and the start position. So once we were to crank this mower up, if we wanted to have those headlights on, we'd simply turn this switch back to the headlights position. And then from here, we can go to the front and see that our headlights are on. So once you've got this machine running and it's in that run position, if it starts to get dark on you, you need those headlights. We're just gonna turn that switch back one position Position, that will turn those lights on. Now, right below that key switch is gonna be our PTO engagement switch. So this is gonna be the button that turns our blades on and off. And on the S140, it is gonna be an electric switch here. So to turn those blades on, we're gonna pull up on that switch and to turn them off, we're gonna push down. Then we move over to our right. Down here on the floor, we're gonna have our twin touch pedal system. So to drive this mower, it's as simple as starting it up. Then we're gonna find our speed here with our throttle. And then we have our forward pedal here and our reverse pedal here. Now these are gonna give us speeds of five and a half mile an hour going forward and 3.2 mile an hour going backward whenever we have this machine in full throttle. Now also over here on my right, you are gonna have a storage cubby and also a cup holder. That way, if you want to have that beverage on board, if you need to put your phone or your keys or your wallet, whatever those things are, you do have that storage compartment there. Now also on this mower, you are gonna have the 15 inch high back seat here that does have that opening in the middle to allow for a little bit of airflow. This is also gonna have an adjustable seat. So over on the right hand side of your seat, you are gonna have a lever that that you can raise up on to change that position. And with that adjustment, you're gonna have 10 different positions to fit those different operators with the different heights of operators you may have. This is gonna be a nice handy feature. And then also underneath the seat, you're gonna have a two spring suspension system there that is going to allow for a little softer ride on this machine, add to the comfortability of this machine. And then also once we're looking underneath the seat, this is where our fuel opening is gonna be. So what you're gonna have is a one and three quarter inch opening here. This is gonna be a 2.4 gallon tank. Now, as far as as the fuel gauge goes on the S140, you are going to have that manual fuel gauge. So right down here between your legs on the fender deck, you are gonna have that manual gauge. Now this is based on a weight system. So the more fuel that you have in that tank, that is what is going to change the height of your fuel gauge here. So what you might see is whenever you're moving along or if this machine's bumping around, you may see that fuel gauge bumping up and down. And that is because it is on that manual system. Now, moving here to the rear of the mower, a few things to point out. One is going to be these two mount pieces right here. This is gonna be our cargo mount system. And along with these are gonna be two mounts in the front of our dash. And these are going to allow us to mount a multitude of different attachments to this machine. So one great thing about these 100 series machines is we can add all sorts of attachments to these. We can add bagging kits to these, mulching kits. We can add full weather enclosures, sun canopies, all types of different things with the attachability of these 100 series. And a lot of that has to do with these two here, the cargo mount system. Now we're also going to have this rear hitch. This is gonna be a simple clevis style hitch that we can add those different pull type attachments, whether we want to add a pull type spreader, pull type sprayer, maybe a yard cart or a leaf sweeper, all those different things we can add here at the rear of this machine. And you are gonna have a towing capacity of 500 pounds. So just remember whatever item that you are pulling along with whatever may be inside of that spreader or in the back of that yard cart, you cannot exceed that 500 pound limit. You wanna be making sure that you are aware of that. Now, one thing that does not ever get enough of the love is going to be the actual transaxles on these mowers. So what we have here is going to be the Tough Torque or Kanzaki TLT 200s. These are going to be your most residential basic transaxles here, but they are all going to be that cast aluminum. And then also right here, you are going to have your transaxle release lever. Now this is going to be one of those things that we hope you never have to use, but if you do get in those situations where the mower won't start, you maybe need to push it. Maybe we need to push it up onto a trailer. You do have that release lever that you simply pull out here. That is going to release this 
rear transaxle and allow you to push this machine a whole lot easier. Now, next let's talk about the mower deck. This is going to be the hot topic on any mower because we want to know what we have underneath the machine cutting that grass. So what we have here is going to be the 48 inch edge system from John Deere. This is going to be a single piece of forged 12 gauge steel that makes up this 48 inch deck. So with the 48 inch deck, you are gonna have three blades, like I mentioned before, along with those three blades, you're gonna have those three spindles on top that we need to be making sure and greasing and taking care of. Now, the other thing too is that you are gonna have these bolt-on spindle covers on the left-hand side and the right-hand side that are not only gonna be spindle covers, but they're also going to act as belt guides. So make sure that whenever we take these off to do that cleaning, that we are putting these back on and making sure that they are in place correctly because they do aid in keeping that belt in place when this mower deck is in use. Now with this deck, you are gonna have four anti-scalping wheels. You're gonna have two at the front and also two at the rear. These are gonna be adjusted so we need to make sure and be getting those in the right height depending on where we're going to be cutting here with our cutting height. We're also going to have a washout port on this deck. Now this is where we can hook a hose up, get this mower onto either an asphalt or concrete surface, lower this mower all the way down to the ground, turn that water on on that hose, turn the blades on on the mower, and this is going to clean the underside of the deck. Now the one thing with this is that I only recommend doing this ever so often because you want to make sure on these decks to use the least amount of water as possible. Whenever we're talking about water, we're talking about the ability of having rust. We're talking about extra corrosion, extra damage. So the more air that we can use on this deck to do cleaning and for the underside scraping out that material, the better you are then to wash this deck. So make sure that we're doing that. Also over on the right hand side, we are going to have that discharge chute cover that is going to be spring loaded. You're also gonna have that large opening there for that discharging of those clippings. But keep in mind, you can add the bagging system as I mentioned before, and also the mulch kits to this machine as well. So now, whenever we're going on to start this machine, go ahead and push that choke forward, turn the key, let it start up. It's gonna be at that high rev there. Just go ahead and dial it back down. Here is gonna be at our low idle. We want to be all the way at the high idle whenever we're mowing. Now, whenever we go to engage the blades, a good rule of thumb here for me is to always be about mid throttle. Now, what you'll see sometimes is they say to go ahead and be at high, high throttle whenever you do this, but mid throttle is a good range because we don't want to be too low because that can be hard on the belt. And then if we're too high, that can be hard on the belt as well. So we'll go ahead and let off this parking brake, go ahead and pull up and engage those blades. So here's what it's gonna sound like with the blades on. I'm gonna push on my forward pedal here to go forward. Now, like we talked about, if I wanted to go in reverse, once I start to push that, you can hear there that it's starting to kill that mower deck. But if I push my RIO button first, then start to go in reverse and then let off, now the mower deck stays engaged. So very easy operation there. Like I said, to operate that, we just have that forward pedal and that reverse pedal. You saw there how it is to engage those blades. So very, very easy there with that button. And then we can go ahead and stop the engine here. So now let's talk a little bit about the dimensions of the mower. This is gonna be important when we're talking about getting this in and out of that shed or that storage place that you have this mower. So what we're gonna be is we are gonna be right at 70 inches long from the front to the rear. Height wise at the top of the seat here is gonna be your tallest point and this is gonna be 44 inches. Now width wise, even though this is a 48 inch cut deck, the width with the chute and with the addition of the little bit of bevel on each side of the deck, you're gonna be at 61 inches with the chute down. Now, once you raise that chute up, you're gonna be at around 52 inches. So depending on where you need to get this, just know that those widths are not gonna be that 48 as it is on the cutting width of this machine. And then weight wise, we're gonna be about 468 pounds. Now the last two points to this are going to be the warranty and the price. So the warranty on these machines is gonna be a two year, 120 hour, whichever comes first, bumper to bumper warranty. That is going to exclude wear items such as belts, blades, tires, things like that. But if you have any issues with the engine or transmission, mainly with or electrical issues within those two year, 120 hours, 
definitely make sure and take advantage of that warranty. And then also whenever you're looking at buying one of these machines, look into those options of adding that extended warranty to this machine if that's something that you're interested in. Now, whenever we're talking about, about price on these machines, this S140 is gonna start at that $27.99 range. Now that's gonna be without any attachments or any additional warranty. So as you add those things to this machine, the price of that may go up, but that is going to be John Deere's list price on their website for just this mower. Now, when we're looking at purchasing this mower, some of the things that you wanna look for is you do want to go to your local dealership or maybe even to your local Lowe's or Home Depot. Make sure to check out those prices. Make sure to go where you can get the best deal. Make sure to ask about any available discounts that may be out there for you. And then also make sure that you're checking out all of the finance options on this machine if you're not looking to drop that whole full price at that point of purchase. But guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you liked this video. Video. And if you did, we just asked you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, guys, if you're needing any John Deere parts at all, make sure to check us out at 247parts.com. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey, guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.